This video is about potassium and its ability to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system. And then I'm also going to talk about two other nutrients, well, really just one, magnesium, that has the ability to inhibit the sympathetic nervous system and how that may have come together over the past week and a half, two weeks, to provide me with better sleep. I've always been a notoriously poor sleeper. I tend to fall asleep okay. The problem is I don't stay asleep. And that's just, I know you never feel like you have a really good night sleep. You kind of wake up the next day and you never feel refreshed. I don't know what it's necessarily like to feel refreshed. I don't get extremely tired during the day, uh, but I never wake up in the morning like, oh, so refreshed. I don't know what that is. However, recently I have this heart rate monitor, uh, heart rate variability monitor. It's from a com well, it's called Elite HRV. The app you can get on the apps in any app store, you know, the iPhone app store or the Google Play store. But you have to get this little sensor that you put your your finger in, and then it measures your heart rate and your heart rate variability. Heart rate variability is an overall indicator of good health. The higher your heart rate variability, the more healthy you are, the more adaptable you are. Uh, you can react to different stress in a lot better ways. The, the lower your heart rate variability, uh, the more it's thought that the more you are prone to sickness, illness, anxiety, stress, you don't adapt as easily. So people with higher heart rate variability will generally have better health, or that's what it's believed to indicate. And then people with uh, lower heart rate variability will have poorer health. And it's also a way to measure the state of the autonomic nervous system, which is obviously what we are interested in with postural restoration. Sleeping obviously is a big part of your autonomic nervous system and is regulated by the autonomic nervous system itself. So I had bought this to keep track of my heart rate variability. Now it doesn't measure your heart rate variability overnight. Uh, I have a different one, the Aura Ring. I bought that in August. This one actually measures your heart rate variability right when you wake up. And so it gives you this morning readiness score. <laughs> so you wake up, you put your finger in the thing, you take the reading, and it gives you your morning readiness score. So what you're going to see in this picture, the first picture from January 5th to January 11th, you'll see I score 8, 8, 7, down to a 4, which is not good. Then I'm back up to a 7. And then on the Tuesday, I have it circled. I get a nine and I woke, I woke up, I was like, whoa, what? First of all, I slept pretty well. That was, that was what got me thinking. I said, why did I sleep so well? In terms of, I didn't wake up that much, I didn't wake up that much during the night. And so I thought back to, all right, what did I eat on Monday? Now, the reason I thought about nutrition is because I've been thinking about nutrition for a long time because nothing else has changed my sleeping. All the PRI stuff that I've done, my sleeping has never really improved. And every now and then I'll have one or two nights in a row where I sleep really well, meaning I don't wake up between five and eight times a night. And when I wake up during the night, it's not one of those things where I wake up and then I'm awake for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. It's not one of those things. I just wake up, I know I'm awake, but then I, fall, I just turn over and fall back asleep again. So I'm still more in a state of sleep than I am wide awake. However, I'm aware that I'm awake and it just you just don't get a great sleep. That's You feel it. You just don't feel like you get a great sleep. Just to interject, if you find this video interesting or helpful, could you please like or subscribe or comment or share the content? I would appreciate it. There are five nutrients that are pretty well known to play a role in sleep and regulation of sleep. The first four I was pretty well aware of. They were magnesium, iron, vitamin D, and omega-3s. I have the list here, so I'm peeking. I had experimented with magnesium a lot. Uh, doesn't really change much no matter how much I eat because I fall asleep pretty easily. That's that you have to always keep in mind. I fall asleep pretty easily. Iron I've tried playing with. Vitamin D does help. When I first started taking vitamin D, that's when I first started to fall asleep pretty easily. Before that, for most of my life, I hadn't been falling asleep very easily. So the combination of magnesium and vitamin D allows me to fall asleep 
pretty easily. If you, if you remove either of those two, I'll probably struggle to fall asleep. I was not aware of potassium. So on this Tuesday in question, when I woke up with the high score, I wondered why did I sleep so well? And I wondered why, my, why I scored a nine on my morning readiness uh, test. And so I thought about nutrition. What did I eat the day before? There, nothing else had changed. My life is pretty standard at this point. <laughs> you know, there haven't been any activities that have changed. My work is normal. Everything's pretty normal. I'm still getting the same amount of exercise. Nothing has really changed. Nutrition has always been something that interests me because of the possibility of influencing the state of your autonomic nervous system. And in fact, I found a book years ago called Nutrition and the Autonomic Nervous System. In the book, potassium, or the author states that potassium has the effect of stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system. So magnesium inhibits the sympathetic nervous system while potassium has the effect of facilitating or activating the parasympathetic system. And I had never really given that much thought because quite frankly, I never really liked the food that magnesium, that uh, potassium was found in. And I just, that just wasn't in the forefront of my mind. However, the day before I woke up with that good score, I realized I had made lentil soup and I ate like two huge bowls of lentil soup. And I had also eaten a bag of spinach in the morning and bananas and only because there were bananas there. And I don't usually eat bananas. So I took that into account and I looked up what do they have in common and well, it is potassium in common. And then I remembered the book. I was like, wait a minute, maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe I stimulated my, maybe it had nothing to do with needing to inhibit my sympathetic system. I just needed to stimulate more my parasympathetic system. So I started to go on a binge of <laughs> potassium containing food. And you'll see my second week, I score a lot better. On Wednesday, I get a 10. Then I'm back to an eight, nine, nine, 10, 10, nine. So I've stayed and my sleeping has without a doubt been better. My usual schedule of sleeping is fall asleep at 1030, not usually a big deal. But then around 230, I wake up. Now I can't say for certain that I don't wake up between 1030 and 230, but I don't remember it if I do. So if I remember, if I do wake up at 130, I'll remember it because I'll look at my phone and I'll, I'll just know, I'll just know that I woke up too soon. It's not my norm and so it, it agitates me. But if I get to 2.30, that's four hours, that's kind of normal. I, I have my first wake up and then from 2.30 until 6 or 6.30, usually 6, uh, I'll wake up four, between four, six, eight times and I just wake up and turn back over and go to sleep over the course of those hours. And like I said, it's kind of annoying. But in the past week, I've been doing that a lot less and I noticed a couple days ago, I, when I woke up, I checked my phone, the first, my first wake up, and it was 3.30. So that meant I had slept for five hours without consciously waking up. And then last night, or yeah, this morning, I looked at the phone and it was 4.30. So I slept from 10.30 to 4.30 without being aware that I woke up. I don't know if I woke up or not. As long as I'm not aware or can't remember waking up, to me, I didn't wake up. And that's where I'm at. So potassium, because of its ability to stimulate the parasympathetic system, if you've never tried looking at your nutrition for whatever health issues you're dealing with, especially when it comes to pain or tension or anxiety, stress, you might wanna examine those nutrients, vitamin D, magnesium, iron, omega-3s, and potassium. So where can you find good sources of potassium? Well, I looked it up and you've got, here's just a partial list, but again, you can do your own research. Spinach, Swiss chard, white beans, lentils, potatoes, salmon, yogurt, bananas, and different types of nuts.